G'day. I haven't had a microphone for a while to be able to do tutorials, but I'm back and I'm going to start hooking in. I'm going to start with this icon gallery and um, how you can import assets um, using the, the icon gallery. And we'll also include a couple of other little features like making sure that the object gets appended in as an active object and it moves or um, doesn't move to the 3D cursor and just a few little things like that. So um, yeah, the first things that we're going to need are a blend file with all of the objects that you want to append in. And you're also going to need a directory of the thumbnails. And just to make things easier with serpents and making the add-on, I've named the thumbnails the same as the, the actual objects. So um, you'll see why I did that eventually. So we're just going to start a new project, jump over to serpents. And we're going to add um, a file asset, which will be the, um, the blend file with our assets. And we're going to add a directory with the thumbnails. And we'll say this, this will be that directory. Um, I'm just going to stash all this in a panel and we're going to create an icon gallery. We need to create a property, uh, needs to be an enum. We'll plug that into the icon gallery and now we should have a base um, icon gallery. To generate the items, I'm going to do this dynamically. And even though it's a little bit trickier to set up, um, once you understand the concept, it's it's not that bad. But it just saves having to generate um, all the items manually. So like if you had 50 objects, then you would have to set up 50 objects manually. But if we do it um, procedurally, it's just um, a bit of a time saver for big files and that sort of thing. So we're going to do this through a function and I'll show you in a second why we need to do this or why it's preferred anyway. Um, within our function we can run loops from this execute socket but um, up here we don't have any execute sockets to work off for loops so if we turn off run execute um, we can reference this function and output a list let's go list when this function gets called, it can loop over things and do stuff in the function without needing a white socket for an execute. So that's the advantage of doing it this way. So we'll put this up here just to say that um, that's going to generate our um, enum items for this property. And it's going to get displayed in this panel for that icon gallery. And for the actual enum items themselves we're going to, need to generate them off the thumbnails so we'll grab that asset and what i'm going to do is just visualize this information for you so that you can see what's happening um, so this links to uh, where the asset's going to be stored in your add-on and it'll give the path but um, it's not actually listing all of the png files that are in it so what we need to do is grab a um, path info node, I think. Nope. We want um, just type in file list directory files. So now we want to find every file that is in this path. So a better, better way to visualize this would be to uh, run this over a for loop. And we'll just execute that. And now we're getting each PNG file that's um, within that asset. So um, next we need to generate the enum items. Um, you can find that in the add menu somewhere. Um, and for each file that is in this asset, we want to generate an enum item. We're going to plug that into the name so that'll give it its name. 
and we also want to turn those PNG images into icons. So we can just do that with the icon node. Uh, we'll change this to path, and from here, um, this was giving us the full path to the image, so we can just plug that straight into there, and then that one straight into the icon. And rather than returning off the repeat, we, we only want to return once, so we'll bypass that full loop. And instead, what we're going to do is create a variable, change this to list, and we'll say add to list. And what we're going to do is generate um, a temporary list with each enum item. So this is a make enum item. Um, as opposed to returning each item individually, we just want a list. So um, we're just temporarily creating a list. And straight away you can see, oh shit, um, I forgot to mention that when you're adding to a list, it's good practice to reset the list um, beforehand, in, especially in a scenario like this. Like Just then when I opened it up, there was massive amount of icons being generated because each time this code was updating, um, it just kept adding new items to this list. So um, by resetting the variable first, um, it won't just recursively keep adding, um, it's just basically now refreshing. So um, if you did crash Blender just then, I'm sorry about that, I should have mentioned that beforehand, but you know, you live, you learn, life's hard. Um, so yeah, now we've got all our icons showing, we just need logic so that um, when we click on something, it actually appends it into the file. And um, we've got our function all set up now, so we'll tidy that up, and um, yeah, we'll just leave that over there. So when the user clicks on something, what's happening is this icon gallery is updating, so that's what an on property update node is for. And just to visualize um, what exactly it does, if we print the value that comes out of this, every time the user clicks on something, um, it, the property is being updated and it's printing the value. So at the moment, each of these enum items were given a name through this function. That's where we assigned a name down here. So that's the value that's going to be coming out of here. So if we just jump to that one, um, grill 003. And what we can do is strip off that path and get rid of .png and we have our object name. So that's going to make it a, a lot easier for appending the object that's associated with that name. So um, we'll grab append from file and change this to object. We want to append the object in. Uh, we just need the asset uh, with our assets in it. And we just need to manipulate this string now to get rid of all that crap on it that we don't need. So that's where the path info node comes in. And actually, if I just print this for you, I'll show you what's happening. Let's go print. Um, so we want base name that'll just strip off the path. And if we click on something, we've got flies one PNG and we just need to get rid of that png as well so we'll go replacing string dot png replace it with nothing so now when we click on something there's our object name and that's going to help us um, a lot and we just need to now use the append from file we just need this as the name and that as the path. So we're getting the assets from that path and we're telling it which asset to append in based on the names that we generated, you know, for each of these items. So now when I click on something, um, it should append in the object. And by default, when objects get appended in, they're not active. It is selected, but not active. So we can fix that pretty easy. Uh, we grab an objects, objects node and a set property. 
we can set the active object to be the object we just appended in. So delete that, add in an object, and now it's active. So that's what this socket represents. It represents the appended thing that you just, whatever type, um, that you just appended into the file. So we can use that straight into there, makes things easy. And another thing that we can do, um, because objects are going to be appended in at their world location in the um, blend file, the source blend file, um, you might not want them offset. So what we can do is just, um, when they get created in, uh, appended into the file, we can just move them to the 3D cursor or something. And we can do that as like an optional Boolean, for example. Um, so we can just say like, if else, um, grab this Boolean. If it's true, then move it to the 3D cursor, move the object to the 3D cursor. And we can also just display this Boolean so that the user has um, an option to tick. We can say move to 3D cursor. And if the um, user has this Boolean ticked, then we want to out of the true socket, set the property and we want an object location. So I'm going to grab it from the view layer objects and then just any object. And there should be a location property. So we've got location and we want to set the location of the appended object that we just appended in to the 3D cursor. And quick way to grab that is just the 3D cursor location here. We can just grab that change this to active scene. Um, this needs to be a VEC3. So now we're setting the location of the object to the 3D cursor. And we'll get rid of that and just test this to make sure it works. Voila. And if the user turns it off, then it will just be appended in its world um, location according to the source file. So um, that's, yeah, just a bit of an example how you can use this socket, you know, just to um, locate and set properties, um, you know, for that object, basically. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much the whole setup for this. Um, that's pretty much all I can think of at the moment as far as what to cover. We've got the object being um, set to an active object and um well that's all i can think of then that's a functioning icon enum and it only took us that many nodes to set up something that's pretty pretty functioning and working and does exactly what you want i might do another video for um say if you wanted like a material icon gallery it's just going to involve like a similar process but um, just setting different properties and whatnot. So I might just do a separate video for that and leave this one right there.